so we'll discuss few more cases today okay when we are discussing a sorin case right along with that particular case there are also so, some other topics that uh, become relevant for us right when we discuss these cases landmark cases latest judgments one very important thing that comes is the concept of precedent like why are we even discussing these cases right what's been decided for a certain matter it's related to one specific situation mostly right a certain situation happens parties rights are being violated and they approach the court and court decides the case based on the facts and circumstances once it's decided that's done right why we should be discussing it or why we should be reading the case what happened what did the court decide how the case was decided it's because of this concept called as precedent right so what is precedent it means that once a certain thing has been decided right by superior courts they will decide it based on what was the situation involved what is the law what provisions we have a lot of things are taken into consideration it takes years all together to give the decision so once something has been decided by applying all the time effort energy that same thing should be applied in similar situations or similar cases that is nothing but concept of precedent as in once a certain thing has been decided that would be followed in similar situations by the lower courts so that's why a judicial decision or a judgment becomes important when we read the case we get all these uh, judgments as well right you will always get these case numbers and if you open it mostly uh, they will upload the judgment they would uh, upload the order copies and they become very important for us when we read a sorin judgment completely right we will see that there are two things that a judgment involves one is reason for the decision another one is general observations reason for the decision as in why this sorin decision was given why was hijab ban allowed why was it thought that it is not like violation of right to religion it is fine if there is a restriction on wearing hijab in classroom right that is nothing but it will be based on different laws different provisions a lot of things would be taken into consideration along with that certain general observations may also be made by the judges so this part is very important which becomes binding and when we say it becomes binding on which court whose judgment is binding that is also very important okay so when we say decisions are binding if supreme court decides something right being the apex court supreme court's decisions will be applicable to all the other courts to all the subordinate courts they should follow and abide by it throughout the territory of india but supreme court may not be bound by its own decision a higher or a larger bench may make changes in whatever was previously decided by court right that's why we see in so and so case supreme court said like this in another case the decision was completely changed supreme court said something else completely right so supreme court is bound by its own decisions but a larger bench may make changes if there are any errors or anything has happened when we talk about high courts high courts decisions are binding on its subordinate courts so if karnataka high court has said that yes girls should not be wearing hijab inside classroom that decision is binding on all the other subordinate courts under karnataka high court but some other state may give a different decision because that particular state's court is not bound by what high court of karnataka had to say okay so this is how these uh, precedent works whose decision will be binding on who okay so when this 
case started like starting of this year itself 2022 starting of this uh, year so whatever karnataka high court had decided that particular decision will be binding on all the other subordinate courts in karnataka whether that particular judge approves accepts that decision or not that judge might be completely against that decision but even then they will have to follow it because they are subordinate right they are coming under karnataka high court so if you look at this particular case which initially was before karnataka high court there were few writ petitions which were filed right when for a certain matter lot of applications are being filed those are heard uh, together so this was the main case along with it one two three four four other writ petitions were also being filed and this is one uh, order that we have for this particular thing i'll share the link in case you are willing you can see the order copy as well actually in the high court website they have not updated the final judgment but yeah order copy is there you can check that so what happened initially is there were six girls in a go in government pu college in udupi they were not allowed to sit inside the classroom because their face was covered and they were wearing hijab so they said that if we are not been allowed to enter into the class we will like they started protesting right because they were not allowed to sit inside the classroom and they said that we have a right to wear hijab because otherwise we are wearing the uniform right so when we talk about this right it comes from constitution of india constitution of india which provides us certain fundamental rights or freedoms and when we talk about these freedoms that also provide us freedom to practice profess propagate any uh, religion right so it is basically a fundamental right that is guaranteed to us by the constitution right to freedom of religion article 25 right article 25 to 28 a lot of rights are been included so they went on protesting and there was this uh, bjp mla in udupi he said that held meeting with parents and stakeholders and he told the students to follow college dress codes in the classroom and they these uh, six students they stayed away from the classroom so he said whatever is the school uni uh, college uniform you should wear that only but they were or uh, not like they were not allowed to sit inside the classroom and then following that there were a lot of other things also which happened right wearing saffron scarf and going to the classroom and all of that happened and also students filed a writ petition in the high court that our fundamental right is being violated right we can file a writ petition when our fundamental right is being violated in the high court or directly in the supreme court as well so they also filed a case that our right is being violated and following that incident there were other boys who were wearing this saffron shawl and then a lot of situations took place there were colleges were also closed for some 2 3 days as well right during that particular time and during this time what happened is while the case was still pending before karnataka high court karnataka government issued an order stating that students have to comply with uniform or dress code that is prescribed by college development committees so whatever is prescribed they need to wear that only and college development committees are having a right under karnataka educational act 2013 and 18 that they can prescribe uniform and whatever is being prescribed that only the students should wear and come to the class so education department also issued circular based on the rules and appeal to student to follow the uniform whatever is prescribed by your college development committee you wear that only until and unless high court decides on these writ petitions which are been pending
Okay, so then uh, this case was uh, decided by Karnataka High Court, and Karnataka High Court said that wearing hijab is not like an essential religious practice in Islam. Okay, so this is very important. What is essential religious practice? As in, when you look at the constitution, right, you will always see that when fundamental rights are given to us, these are not absolute rights. Okay, mostly you would see that say it starts itself with subject to public order, morality, health, and other provisions of this part. As in, you are having freedom of religion, you are given this right, but this right is not absolute. This right is what it is subject to public order, morality, health, etc. Same ways, even our right to freedom of speech and expression is also not absolute. Right to life is also not absolute. Right? In case somebody commits a crime, they may be given death penalty. So all these rights are subject to certain conditions. And public order is something which is very important. Right? So when we say that we are being given this uh, fundamental right, to practice, profess, propagate any religion, is it essential part of the religious practice? Is it that without wearing hijab, you cannot uh, practice, profess, propagate your religion? That question is very much important. Okay, so it was said that wearing hijab is not an essential part of religious practice in Islam. And also this restriction was not like, universal restriction, right? It was only that because college is prescribing a uniform inside classroom, you are not allowed. Otherwise, you are allowed to wear it. Okay, so Supreme, what did High Court say is that student could not object to this reasonable restriction in the form of uniforms. Why are uniforms given? Just to ensure that everybody is equal, right? Everyone is seen with the equal eyes without any religious or other barriers. So that is nothing but a reasonable restriction. There is a reason why uniform is prescribed at the end of the day, right? That should not be violated. And also because it's not an essential part of religious practice, it's something that is not affecting fundamental rights of these students. Similar kind of a case we had also seen before Supreme Court of India. It was Muhammad Hanif Qureshi versus State of Bihar, wherein the question was relating to uh, slaughtering of cows. Okay, like there were certain uh, states which passed laws that banned cow slaughtering. Okay, and then this case was filed in the court saying that it is affecting our right to practice, profess, propagate religion. But then Supreme Court said that it's not an essential part. Sacrificing cows is not an essential part of this religious practice. So this restriction is permissible. This restriction is not taking away your Article 25 because fundamental rights are not absolute in itself. There are reasonable restrictions. Okay, so in this case also same thing happened. During COVID also we had seen for many festivals, for many celebrations like, like Puja, Ganesh Chaturthi and so many other things. Restrictions were imposed, right? At one point in time, there can be only 100 people who can gather, they can offer prayers, but then uh, prasad distribution would be restricted or something like that. As if you practice your religion, what is essential, that part you do. There is no restriction in doing the puja, but yes, there is restriction in public gathering, there is restriction in open distribution of prasad and stuff like that, right? So these things uh, continue. So here also what happened is uh, this ban was allowed that along with uniform, whatever is the uniform that only should be owed because hijab is not like an essential part of religious practice. It was banned in, uh, like inside the classrooms. So this decision came in uh, March 2015 and these restrictions were there. And after that, what happened is all, the, all these writ petitions, five writ petitions that were 
uh, filed before Karnataka High Court. These petitions were dismissed and High Court ruled that restrictions on wearing of uniform was reasonable and that students cannot oppose it. There is a valid reason why uniforms are being prescribed. And if uniform is being prescribed, then we should wear the uniform while uh, we are inside the classroom. Okay, so after that, a special leave petition was filed on behalf of the students before the Supreme Court of India. Now, what is a special leave petition? Mostly you will see when High Court decides on a matter, right? There would be, apart from the judgment, there will be one, the certification is there. Wherein High Court certifies that, okay, maybe this matter can be referred to Supreme Court. It involves an important question or something like that. Okay, if... High court thinks that this matter is not having that much of importance. It should not, like Supreme Court should not invest their time in deciding on it. There that certificate might be missing. Okay, and if parties are still not satisfied with the decision of high court, they can approach the Supreme Court by way of special leave petition. Okay, so how they can approach? It is given under Article 136 of Constitution of India, they will approach the Supreme Court and they will give their grounds that this is what has happened. This is why we want to appeal. Right? They are seeking permission of the Supreme Court that you accept this appeal. If Supreme Court is satisfied that yes, maybe this matter involves some important points or important questions, then it can be accepted as well. So if special leave to appeal is accepted, it will be entertained just like a regular court. Same thing happened here. They approached the Supreme Court by way of special leave petition. Petition was accepted and Supreme Court decided to hear the matter. Okay, so what was the argument by petitioner? They submitted that High Court failed to note that Karnataka Education Act does not provide for any mandatory uniform to be worn by students and right to wear a hijab falls under the ambit of right to privacy only, right to behavioral privacy. How you want to maintain your privacy even being in a public place like in the classroom or inside your college or university, how you want to preserve that right of privacy, right? It forms a part of that. So wearing hijab should not be prohibited inside the classrooms as well. Okay, and then Supreme Court heard the arguments of the parties and finally uh, it had to uh, like give a decision right and this matter was referred to a two judge bench of supreme court of india okay before a two judge bench the case was decided so when we talk about high courts supreme courts there are these benches that we see and you will get the details relating to benches in this document you can save this one also okay you can save this link as well it provides certain details relating to how supreme court functions okay this handbook on practice and procedure and office procedure it tells us about benches as well see benches of supreme court there are different types of benches that we have one is called as division bench Okay, one is called as division bench, not less than two judges will decide the matter. Okay, so there are single bench also, like uh, specially for appeal that will be decided by single bench. There is division bench, a lot of cases, a lot of matters are decided by division bench only. And we have constitutional bench, maybe relating to interpretation of constitution or presidential and vice presidential elections, those matter would go to constitutional bench, which is not less than five judges. So it may be five, seven, nine, 11, 13, like that. 
number of judges will be there and constitutional bench single as in one person divisional bench as in it may be two three like that nominated by the chief justice of india so in this particular case also the matter was before a divisional bench in the supreme court a division bench was hearing the matter two judges bench was hearing the matter now when number of judges is like 5 7 9 3 11 13 etc right we would come to a conclusion right even if like five judges supporting something are remaining judges are against it we will come to a conclusion but in case of division bench what happens there might be split verdict as in one judge saying something another one saying completely opposite so in such cases what will happen when both the judges cannot come to a conclusion both are having two different views right there the matter would again be referred to chief justice of india and he would constitute a different bench like higher number of with higher number of judges and the case would be decided so same thing happened here when it was referred to the supreme court of india right it was a division bench consisting of two judges one judge dismissed the petition the petition that was filed by filed before the supreme court right challenging that karnataka high court's order is not acceptable it is affecting their right to privacy right to religion he said that this wearing hijab is not an essential part of religious practice so whatever karnataka high court has said that is correct only so he upheld the decision he approved that decision he approved the ban saying that it is not an essential part of religious practice and also this ban is not universal it's just inside educational institutions also because we have uniforms being prescribed so this is correct only but the other judge justice dhulia he said wearing hijab is a matter of choice what is more important for us to be considered is education of girls it should not happen that just because there are restrictions like these parents are not sending their kids to college or something like that that should not happen what is more important for us is education right so rather than considering all this matters we should focus on education that anyhow they should get the education so he was not in support of the decision that karnataka high court had given so basically they could not come to a conclusion both of them had two different opinions or two different views there was a split verdict basically right so now this matter will be referred to maybe a uh, five judges or a nine judges constitutional bench and after that we need to wait and see what the decision will be right so this is the matter until here where we have this few things important concept of precedent then this other case muhammad hanif qureshi relating to uh, article 25 right is something essential part of religious practice or not is ban bans are like good or bad right is our fundamental right absolute or not all these things were considered here and same with different benches of supreme court the concept that we get over here this is also something that we need to see so again this final judgment we need to wait for it and see what it is okay is this clear any point you want to be repeated many times you will see special uh, leave to appeal being filed <clears throat> right there was another case national anthem case there also parties appeared before supreme court by way of special leave to appeal only so special leave to appeal we can say it's like a uh, one of the types of jurisdiction 
that the Supreme Court is having. Okay, so this is under Article 136 of the Constitution of India. And this link also you can uh, save in your free time. You can simply go through it. A lot of important information regarding functioning of Supreme Court is uh, being mentioned in this PDF handbook on practice and procedure and office procedure. Okay, next we will see another case. Another case that is <clears throat> relating to suspension of execution of sentence. Now, when a case is decided, right? If a case is decided and the accused person against whom case was filed, that person is convicted. Okay, maybe a case is being filed and there is an accused person. As in, we are not yet sure whether he has committed the crime or not. But after hearing and after all the different steps, court finally convicted him. As in, his guilt was proved. The person's guilt was proved. Once his guilt was proved, what will happen? Court will give him sentence, right? It might be fine. It may be imprisonment, it may be something else also. So once a person's guilt is proved, court will give him sentence that this is what you should uh, like do because you are being convicted, your guilt was proved in the court. Now, when a case is decided, maybe by the trial court, when case was filed before magistrate court or sessions court, and court found that person to be guilty and gave the sentence. After that, what may happen is that party or the convicted person may prefer appeal. Right? This convicted person may prefer an appeal that I'm not satisfied with this decision. I want to prefer an appeal. During this point, Right? When this appeal is filed, appeal is pending, maybe for three to four years, the appeal is pending before the appellate court. Right? During this point, what happens is party can approach the court for suspension of execution of sentence. As in my appeal is pending, let the appellate court also decide that, yes, I am convicted and this is the sentence that I should undergo. Right? Until that is decided, my sentence should be suspended, right? Execution on execution, there would be suspension, as in I should not be given the punishment immediately. I should be released for that particular point in time until the case is being decided, until appeal is pending before the court. So relating to that, only this person filed the case, okay? Krishan Kumar versus State of Haryana, he filed a case for suspension of execution of sentence. That until my appeal is pending, the sentence that the trial court has given, there should be suspension on its execution. It was again before a division bench of the Supreme Court of uh, India. Okay, so what happened is the person was given punishment by the trial court and then he approached the high court that my sentence should be suspended uh, for this point in time. But high court has not accepted prayer of the petitioner for suspension of execution of sentence. When he approached the high court that there should be suspension, it should not be executed immediately, let the appeal be decided. High court did not accept his petition. Apart from not accepting his petition, what High Court said is that High Court had put a limitation or a restriction that we are not accepting this prayer plus until next three years. Okay, you should not be filing this kind of case, uh, like applications 
for suspension of application. So before a minimum period of three years from date of conviction, you should not approach the court. So in this case, what happened is that the person's uh, sentence to be released on bail is a statutory right. We say, right, that bail is a right and refusal is an exception. If there is no like valid reason or something, bail should be like permitted, right? It is a statutory right given to the parties. So it not just violated the statutory right of the person, but also high court put, has put a bar that until three years, you should not be coming with these kind of prayers for suspension of sentence. So that is not a proper decision which high court has given. Okay, Supreme Court was of the opinion that you are first of all violating statutory right of the appellant. Right to be released on bail is a statutory right. You are violating that. Also, you are putting a restriction of three years. Until three years, such application should not be fined. You are putting a restriction as well. Okay, so Supreme Court was of the view that this particular uh, while deciding this case, right, High Court was uh, not deciding it properly. So Supreme Court said that this particular uh, order that they have passed, right, it would be uh, like dismissed, right? The petition stands dismissed. All the so this time specific bar that the High Court has put that is not. Uh, correct and party is having a statutory right he has been given this right so court should uh, entertain this kind of matters whenever the convicted person is approaching for suspension of execution of sentence until the case is finally decided by the appellate court until the time when his appeal is pending if there are no valid enough reasons he can be released on bail so that if higher court decides that okay fine his guilt is not proved or something like that, right? Decision may go against it. In such cases, it should not happen that he unnecessarily had to suffer for three or four years. He had to go through the punishment even though appellate court did not find him guilty. Okay, another one we have B. Boria represented through legal representatives. Many cases you will see these kind of short forms. So this person is being represented through his legal representatives. Sometimes it may happen that case was filed in the lower court, but while the case was pending, the person died. Or maybe case was decided after that for appeal and stuff, the person died. Then many times we see that a person is represented through legal representatives, mostly in case of civil matters, property cases and stuff like that, right? Where property would get transferred to legal representatives, they might uh, proceed with the case. So here also same thing happened. Uh, this is one case, civil matter relating to property, okay? Well, we need to understand difference between three things. And these are three things that you will come across a lot of times when you are reading judgments or otherwise also, right? When you are reading different concepts or topics of law, you will come across uh, these concepts. So what are these? Order, decree, and judgment. Okay, so what is order, decree, and judgment? All of these are related to cases filed before court and what court had to say. Okay, so judgment, what is a judgment? Judgment is something that we commonly see, right? So judgment is like the final decision which court will give. In a judgment, they will mention the reasons also why so and so decision is given. They will mention the act, 
mention the provisions, laws, case laws, precedent, everything they will mention. And they might also make some observations as well. Okay, so judgment is what? Judgment is where court will mention all of these things, right? That this is what has happened. This is what the law is. This is what was held in so-and-so case. And that is why we are coming to this conclusion. Maybe they might say under IPC, theft is a crime. Punishment is maximum three years. Considering how the person has committed this crime, we are giving him two years of punishment plus 3,000 rupees fine. Okay, that will be nothing but judgment when decision is given. There are two things called as order and decree. Okay, so what is an order? Order is formal expression of the decision of civil court, which is not a decree. So court will pass some orders also. Right, maybe there is a case, okay, mortal accident. Accident has taken place and one person suffered injury. He filed a case for compensation. In this case, what will happen, right? Court will pass an order whereby court will say that because this person has suffered injury, as a result of so-and-so accident, he is entitled to claim 80,000 rupees compensation. Okay, 80,000 rupees compensation and this amount should be paid by the insurance company of the respondent. Okay, and it should be paid within two months. Within two months from today. That is nothing but an order. Court is ordering that this petitioner is entitled to 80,000 rupees compensation. It should be paid within two months in three equal installments. This is nothing but order. Court is ordering that this is how it should be paid and this is how much should be paid as a compensation to the party because he sustained injury as a result of this accident okay that is order now what is decree decree is formal expression of an adjudication which conclusively determines rights of parties so in a decree what will happen is so this is what we have as order in a decree what will happen is court will say that we are deciding this case in favor of maybe the petitioner okay he is entitled to claim for eighty thousand compensation he claimed for one leg but after considering the case we have come to the conclusion that he is entitled to eighty thousand rupees compensation and it should be paid within this state that is nothing but the decree where they will mention who in whose favor the case was decided what they are entitled to. This is more like an order wherein court will ask the parties that you do this, you do that within this time. This is where court will say in whose favor case is being decided and judgment is like a more formal thing wherein the reasoning will be given, the applicable laws, the applicable procedures will be mentioned. Okay, these are the three things that we should be knowing in relation to a civil suit that is filed before court, order, decree, and judgment. Okay, and when the case is decided, might be a case can go on for five years, 10 years. During this 10 years time also, right, many orders may be passed by the court. In between also orders may be passed. In between also court might order that you do this, you submit this document, you produce this notice, you publish it. Like that also some orders may be passed. Like this one, what we have, right? Relating to the hijab case, it is also nothing but an order, right? That was passed by Karnataka High Court. So in case of an order, 
they can mention that until the case is finally decided, do these, 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 these certain things. And what you do, list this matter. Again, we will hear it on 14th of February 2022 at this particular time for further consideration. Right, so until the case is finally decided, these are certain things. So see, in the above circumstances, we request the state government and all other stakeholders to reopen the educational institutions and allow students to return to classes at the earliest. Colleges were closed for some three, four days, right? So what High Court said is that we require some more time to decide on the matter until we decide what order was passed that all the educational institutions should be reopened and let classes start at the earliest, just like the regular thing. Okay, we restrain all students regardless of religion. So regardless of religion, even though it was a hijab case, there were also students who were wearing saffron shawls and stuff like that. Right? So we restrict them that whatever be your religion, all these things, right? You should not wear inside the classroom. Let this matter be decided. So that is nothing but an order, right? Which is given in between where, while the case was not finally decided. So these kind of orders we see, decrees we see, finally in whose favor the case was decided, and then judgment, which is the final thing in a formal way, everything will be uh, mentioned there. Okay, is this three things clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so these three things you will come across a lot of times. Okay, you can just note it down also. Now, what happened in this case? What was this matter all about? It was relating to dismissal of appeal versus decree merged in decision of appeal. Sometimes what may happen, right? When a decision is given, party is not happy with the decision, they would go for appeal. From a lower court, they will go to a higher court to file an appeal. Many times, higher court... Higher court will say that whatever lower court has said is true and we are dismissing the appeal. That means we don't have anything else to say, but whatever lower court has said, we agree to that, we accept that. So we are dismissing your appeal. Whatever lower court had said, same thing will be applied. We approve that. So like that, they may accept the decision of the lower court. As in dismissing the appeal, we are dismissing this appeal. We accept whatever lower court has said, the same thing will be applicable. Many times what might happen is decree merged in decision of appellate court. Decree is what? Where part court would mention in whose favor cases decided, what they are entitled to and everything, right? So decree merged in decision of appellate court. When appeal was filed in the higher court, higher court gave a decision and in that decision, they said that, yes, this is what lower court had said. This is how it has happened. Like higher court also made some observations or something might be, but they gave a decision in such a way that lower court's decree is merged in decision of appellate court. Whatever appellate court said, that would be finally applicable because it's a higher court, right? But they conveyed it in such a way that lower court's thing is also merged in it. Whatever lower court said, those things are also part of what appellate court had to say. Okay, so in this case, same thing happened. Okay, in this case also, when appeal was filed, the decree of lower court was merged in decision of the appellate court. Okay, and there was some mistake in the decree. 
in decree what will happen right parties would also provide details like in case of property matters they would give details of the property that this is what the property is about this is where the property is located so sometimes there is a possibility that there might be some uh, clerical errors there might be some typos and stuff like that that right? sometimes in place of two legs they might write three legs in place of house number 56 they might write 66 those kind of small mistakes might be there and those mistakes can be corrected parties can go to the court and say that there was this certain mistake that has happened and court will correct that mistake and issue a fresh copy of the decision okay so here also same thing happened regarding the property right there was a mistake they had to mention this property they mentioned a different property in the lower court and same thing high court also did when appeal was filed and decree of lower court was merged in decision of appellate court that same mistake continued they had to mention property scheduled property b they mentioned scheduled property c there was some mistake okay so which court should party approach for this correction which court they should approach because ultimately it needs to be followed right whatever court has said if there is some mistake in that decree itself which court we should be approaching is it the appellate court or is it the lower court that was the question over here okay so in this case it was said that in case high court has dismissed the appeal and whatever lower court said that becomes applicable there you should approach lower court you should approach lower court because it was lower court who gave this decision right so in case you want any corrections you need to approach lower court only but in case the mistake of lower court continued even in appellate court there you should approach appellate court only for the correction because appellate court is like a higher court right so whatever appellate court has said that becomes applicable to you so when you want to make any corrections you need to approach appellate court only and their only correction has to be done you cannot approach the lower court because higher court has approved it right lower court cannot make changes over there so you need to approach the appellate court only so this decision helps us understand difference between these orders decrees judgments and what will happen in case there are mistakes clerical errors and stuff like that the, those kind of situations happen quite a lot of times wherein parties approach the court later on for corrections okay so it usually happens that whichever court has given the decision same court only you will approach for the correction also right but if it has happened that it up, went for appeal and stuff also two three courts are involved in such a case which court do you approach that there the confusion comes right so in case it is like dismissal of appeal there you approach the lower court only but in case high court or the appellate court also had something to say decree of lower court was merged in decision of the appellate court that means you are going to follow decision of appellate court only so for any sort of corrections also you need to approach the appellate court as it is the higher court okay so this was relating to a property dispute and the mistake was relating to specifying the property which property uh, was involved relating to that there was a mistake so supreme court said the high court should entertain the matter and it should go before the high court only for corrections being the higher court or being the appellate court
okay another case we have that is again before supreme court of india okay joydeep majumdar versus bharti majumdar what happened in this case is what happened in this case is basically there was husband and wife okay both of them are husband and wife so we have certain uh, grounds okay when parties are willing grounds of divorce it may happen that parties got married and then they are willing to uh, get divorced okay there are certain grounds it should it it cannot happen that today a person got married and another day he is going to the court and saying that i don't want to continue this marriage i want divorce that will not be entertained there are certain grounds we need to prove either of these grounds there on, then only we can claim divorce okay one common ground is cruelty okay now cruelty may be like physically uh, hitting someone physically treating someone as like in a cruel manner that also can include it might be mental cruelty also right physical thing it's very easy we can prove before the court and court might accept that ground also but what about mental cruelty what can constitutes mental cruelty right there the confusion comes in the picture now what happened in this case right joydeep majumdar versus bharti majumdar here what happened is both of them got married to each other in 2006 okay and since starting of their marriage only they were having issues this person the husband he was army officer and she was a school teacher with phd and other qualifications okay no, no like government uh, pg college teacher with phd degree so both of them were highly qualified and doing their job properly but they were having issues in their marriage since starting okay and they started living separately now the wife wanted to save the marriage okay she wanted to live with her husband she wanted the marriage to continue so what she did is she filed many complaints to his seniors his officers different departments different different places she filed many complaints that her husband is not living with him for no reason he has left him left her and all that she started doing okay and she also filed a case before court that her husband is not uh, you know like without giving any proper reason only he has left her and all that she filed a case before lower court also and now because so many complaints were being filed before his seniors and in different departments that affected his career that affected his reputation in his department and also in the society and he was not liking that thing okay so what he decided is he decided to approach the court and file a case for divorce that i don't want to continue in this marriage because of her i'm suffering a lot and i want this marriage to end he filed a case for divorce and she wanted to save the marriage she filed a case before court that this should be you know like he should not uh, just leave me for no reason she filed a case like that so what lower court did is lower court accepted this particular application which was filed by the husband and he, lower court said that yes it is actually mental cruelty what the wife is doing that she is filing complaints after complaints and that is affecting his reputation that is affecting his career and stuff that actually is mental cruelty and divorce application was accepted okay after that wife went to the high court and high court gave a decision in favor of the uh, wife okay that yes whatever complaint she is filing uh, that is like fine only right she has a right to file that so whatever lower court has decided that is not proper like that it was decided so after that husband was being aggrieved by it 
and he approached the supreme court of india okay and supreme court of india had to decide whether this mental cruelty that was proved by husband as a ground of divorce that is proper or not and supreme court came to the conclusion that yes if in a marriage spouse is doing certain things which are indirectly affecting his reputation not only in his department but also in the society it is affecting his career also it is affecting him in his personal relation also that is nothing but it amounts to mental cruelty okay and because he was able to prove mental cruelty before the court he has validly proved this ground of divorce and lower court was right in accepting the divorce application okay so that like that this case was uh, being decided so here we get to know that there are like two things right one is divorce application and another one we call as a restitution of conjugal rights okay restitution of conjugal rights as in when two persons are married they would expect something from the other okay and if that is not being done they can file a case in the court also to get it done like in this case husband left the wife without any valid reasons so wife can go to the court and file a case for restitution of conjugal rights that i was left for no valid reason so husband should be asked to live along with her and things like that right and court decides this matters a lot of times these kind of cases are being filed also because now people might prefer to live in different cities or different places because of their job and other things right so restitution of conjugal rights application is something which is uh, very common and court would uh, give a decision right in favor of the party or against the parties depending on the arguments that they have put forward so in this case it was relating to mental cruelty right we have cruelty as a ground of divorce otherwise physical things it can be proved but mental things it's difficult to prove but in this case the husband was able to prove it that whatever the wife was doing in the name of saving the marriage was affecting his reputation was affecting his career so that is nothing but cruelty and supreme court also accepted or agreed to that particular uh, view point okay is this part clear any confusion you have Okay, so all these cases that we saw right all these are before uh, supreme court of india so you can simply search the name and then you will get the uh, case as well okay so fine then we'll end this class here you can go through the judgments or decisions as well relating to this online okay thank you